At Bet365, we don't do ordinary. We believe that every sport should be epic. Every goal, every game, every point, every play. From the moments that are legendary to the ones that fly under the radar. Whether it's a game-winning goal in the final seconds of overtime or a shot on the goal in the first period. Whatever the sport, whatever the moment. It's never ordinary at Bet365. 21 plus only. Must be present in Iowa. If you or someone you know has a gambling problem and wants help, call 1-800-BETS-OFF. Terms and conditions apply. Hello, this is international football commentator Derek Ray, and you're listening to the Ranks FC podcast. Hello Rank Squad and welcome to Ranks FC. This is another excerpt from our Monday Patreon post box, which goes out first thing every week, looking at all the weekend's action and answering questions from our brilliant Patreon community. We started this episode talking about the big game at the weekend. Manchester United beating Liverpool 4-3 in the FA Cup after extra time. And what that might mean for Eric Ten Hag, his job, and for United going forward this season. Let's get stuck into it. Things are also good for Manchester United, which is where we're going to start. They beat Liverpool 4-3 after extra time at Old Trafford in the FA Cup, booking themselves a trip to Wembley and a spot in the semi-finals. There haven't been all that many brilliant days for Eric Ten Hag this season. This was fundamentally one of them. And we're going to start with a couple of takes, um, then we're going to discuss those ones uh, and move on to some others. So we'll start with Natan, who says that game might be the perfect counter argument to Dean asking for extra time to be scrapped. An awesome 120 minutes, which tilted and tilted again. Diego Dalla and Carnacho were immense and never stopped running, no matter the score or the position they were asked to play. Kobe Mainu is a gem and Rashford deserves all the flowers. Sorry to my scousers. Klopp's dream farewell tour is cancelled for now. Mark Wilson says, up the Reds, what a match, an FA Cup classic. It might not have been the most tactically great performance from United, but this team showed there's still fight and quality in it. Blow for blow, they matched Klopp's Liverpool side. This could be one of those catalyst matches, not only turns the end of the season around, but could save Eric Ten Hag's job beyond the summer. Andy Mergs says, that was a great game and a great advertisement for English football. I felt United played really well in the first half and throughout extra time. But throughout, they kept being quite easily ran through, especially in the centre of the pitch. With all the plaudits that Darwin's been getting recently, I thought he was poor and went missing throughout the whole game. I was waiting for Liverpool to take advantage of the fact United only had two defenders for a while. I don't think Eric Ten Hag could have made the team any more attacking from his subs and his changes of formation. It felt like they knew, the players knew, that Eric Ten Hag's job might be on the line come the end of the season and they found some extra grit and energy to get the win from the game. Alex Kelly says, what a match. I woke up my whole floor at college watching it here on the West Coast, United till I die. Garnacho didn't score, but I thought he might have been our best player today. And without him, we don't take advantage and fight back because he gave everything to keep his energy up when other levels were dropping. Is he the key to United going forward in future seasons? Because what he felt showed today felt like that. And Chitacular says, can we give Ten Hag his props here? All season, he's been trying to make the best out of the players available to him. When he's not having to force square pegs in round holes, the team look cohesive and produce results. Really hope Ineos rightly give him at least another season at the helm. Yeah, I mean, I'm, Mark says it might not have been the most tactically great performance from United. Maybe not throughout 120 minutes, but... Generally, I thought it was. Generally, yeah. I think Ten Hag nailed it here. And I think that he's given himself a fighting chance of holding on to this job because particularly in extra time, I think he went against everything that you thought this team's DNA now was, which would have been to slowly relent, end up sitting on the edge of your box, sit back, sit back, invite pressure and end up Liverpool end up winning the game. But he didn't. He, he, he was much more forward thinking. He pushed players into forward positions. He crowded the midfield a bit more. He gave Liverpool a lot more to think about. I was actually really impressed with Ten Hag's tactics in this. And I think part of it probably was due to the fact that he knew he had to come up with something different. Um, And I do think that this has not saved his job, but given him a chance of, of hanging around because this is what Ineos needed to see. 
from what I understand, like a decision hasn't been made on Ten Hag, but there was a feeling they were leaning towards like this isn't going to be the man for Man United going forward. And I think a lot of that was down to the fact that this team often do show a mentality that wilts in big moments and that doesn't have the charisma or the personality to impose themselves on a big opponent. And sources were telling me going into the game, like he has to be competitive in this match. They ha- they don't expect to beat Liverpool. You can't expect to beat Liverpool, but you have to compete. He's got a strong team available to him here and full credit to him for the way that he came through some difficult moments in this match um, and to completely turn it around and winning it like that is sensational. And, th- and those moments aren't forgotten at Old Trafford. And while I don't believe that the likes of Sir Jim Ratcliffe will be won over by knee-jerk reactions to moments like that, they'll, they'll be deeper thinking than that, yeah. right? But there's no way a part of him didn't have goosebumps when it did happen. And Ten Hag was the guy that had made sure that the team did play like that in the closing minutes. So this is something that they have to... They have to consider, and what I think is interesting is that the game's coming up because ultimately, like, it's, what does this count for? If Man United get into the next round against Coventry City and lose, then does it? It, it kind of becomes irrelevant, doesn't it? Because suddenly, like, okay, well, that was just a one-off, and he can't do it often enough. So he does have to remain consistent from here. And the the big one I'm looking at already, mate, seventh of April, Man United v Liverpool in the league. If he can do it there as well, if he can pull off a result, a draw, whatever it is, that also dents Liverpool's title hopes, then I think you've got to be like, look, this guy, this guy deserves to carry on because yes, Graham Potter, we might like. Yes, Gareth Southgate, we might like. Um, and there are other contenders out there that possibly could come into the thinking. But they have to think who is the best man for Man United. And given that he already has an understanding, he has spent so much of the season without certain players and he's getting something out of this team now. No, he's got a chance. Yeah, I think this is it. It's not that this is the answer and that this is now, oh, he'll stay because of one result in the FA Cup quarterfinals. But I do think it gives him a platform on which to launch a I should be the man going forward job. That's that's what I think this gives. I think it gives him that catalyst and that moment to be like, okay, we've had the big kind of turning point result, if you want, but the turning still has to come, if if, if you will. It's not about okay, this is you know one brilliant result and the way it, the way that it looks now, and obviously the celebrations and that's all incredible. And United should enjoy those moments because one, there hasn't been all that many of them of late. And two, that's a huge win in a cup against a seemingly unstoppable rival who have been streets ahead for the last five years. Mm. So when we're kind of looking at it in, in that kind of context, I think that this gives Eric Ten Hag a fighting chance, but he has to build on it, as you say, that they won't be they won't be done on one result. It's about and it, it wasn't no. just a result, it'll be the performance as well, but it has to lead to more if United are gonna follow this through going forward. And I, I think that's an important point to consider at, you know, at, at this exact moment. So yeah. yeah, I thought it was, I thought it was a really, really good game. And, you know, as Mark said, an FA cup classic, these are ones you kind of look at and think, yeah, well, what will be shown in, you know, three, four years when they're doing FA cup montages and all of those things. I think that all matters. I also think from a United perspective, what was impressive, especially, you know, as the energy levels were dropping, was that directness. Now, it's obviously easy to say that after they score a a goal from a corner up the other end to win the game. But when you think of the classic Man United teams, that ability to to counter-attack and be direct and, you know, go from one end of the pitch to the other to make things happen was a pretty key facet of it, right? That was something that that Manchester United always had in the locker. And to be able to go and score a goal like that, I, I mean, I do love that Ahmad managed to get himself sent off for the celebration and now we'll miss the semi-finals after scoring it is a the biggest goal of the rules of, that is you know, yeah 100 it's such a it's, frustrating it's rule. silly but it's also you know it's one of those you're like well as soon as you take the shot off as soon as you take the shot off you know it but it, it is what it is but it, it was that, great yeah yeah but and that then, directness he brought I thought to the table and the ability to throw him on and, and make things happen and actually to go for it in a situation where especially 
you know, once you've got to three all and you've got pulled it back from being down in extra time, you're like, oh, that's a moment to then go and actually win it and not go, we're going to just sit here and hold for penalties and, you know, see this out from Liverpool attacking us is a, an impressive feat within its own right, I think. He deals with the goal really well. Um, you know, is the guy winning the ball back and then, you know, when Garnacho slots him in. He's, he deals with the goal really well because it's a bad pass. It's pass behind, is behind him. him. But what Diallo does is he he kind of puts Connor Bradley, wasn't it, who was who was up yeah. up with him, and he puts ba- Bradley off balance with the way that he deals with the pass, and he hits it quick. I don't think any other Man United player would have scored that goal. Maybe Garnacho himself, yeah. but yeah. probably the only one that I actually fancied in that situation to have dealt with that in that moment of the game, but. You know, we are seeing here, and again, in support of Ten Hag, you know, he's he's got Hoyland available to him to start, which always makes such a big difference. Yeah. Rashford can start outside on the left. Garnacho starts um, a game, and then off the bench, you can bring Anthony and Diallo. And Anthony, you know, it's a big moment for him getting that goal. It's a massive moment for him. And you know, the way he took it actually reminded me of Makeda back in the day when he scored that big goal against Aston Villa. And I was like, good for you, mate. Like, but make, let's, make let's this hope be Ahmad's, something. Yeah, let's hope Ahmad's career doesn't follow the same trajectory. But. Yeah, Ahmad's certainly. But um, but yeah, for Anthony, for Ahmad, everyone off that bench, to be fair, United you know, brought on Anthony, Harry Maguire, Christian Eriksen, Ahmad Diallo and Mason Mount. Like, they are five people fighting for their careers at Man United in very different ways. But like, they've all got something to prove. Yeah. And that's a strong bench when you can change a game like that. And yeah, I, I am fed up of extra time because a lot of time it doesn't look like this. When it does, great, but it's very rare that a team does, two teams do actually play out the last period like this. Yeah, definitely. At Bet365, we don't do ordinary. We believe that every sport should be epic. Every goal, every game, every point, every play. From the moments that are legendary to the ones that fly under the radar. Whether it's a game-winning goal in the final seconds of overtime or a shot on the goal in the first period. Whatever the sport, whatever the moment. It's never ordinary at Bet365. 21 plus only. Must be present in Iowa. If you or someone you know has a gambling problem and wants help, call 1-800-BETS-OFF. Terms and conditions apply. Let's just take a couple more questions before we move on. We'll go to Seth. He says, Kobe Mainu is different. United have to base the summer transfer plans and whatever midfielder is brought in around Mainu being undroppable, right? Or should that much hope and expectation not be put on him this early? Undroppable, I don't know is the right word. I don't think anyone should be feeling undroppable. Um, I think that's been part of the problem in teams like Man United through the years, but he's a starter and you know he'll get a new contract and of course, they'll they'll look to build around him. I mean, he's a kid and he's gliding around the pitch like he runs the place. You know, um, the way he can he can get through people with the ball is is fantastic. His vision, his passing, his positioning, he's got it all. It's it's all there. And I'm quite glad he's not in that England setup at the moment because I don't want him like running at this stage, just walk, just just ease him through this period. It's a massive step to be in Man United's first team, right? I know that like Man United aren't the Man United of old, but still like the limelight's still there. The spotlight's still on you. Uh, to have England as well, if he was starting for them, I'd, I'd, I'd be a bit concerned about how he would, would cope with that. So, Plus, from, you know, the, the whole Pedri thing we always talk about, right? We're just playing too many games, games too young yeah. and the injuries that followed. It, there is a reason for this and it's just, you know, muscle fatigue and, and the fact that he's been overworked has led to a point in his career where we're, you know, waiting for Pedri to find some consistent minutes post injuries now. I hope the same thing doesn't happen to Manu in that regard. Yeah, true. Yeah, the, um, that is definitely an aspect of it to look at. But yeah, he's a he's a brilliant footballer. Um definitely put hope and expectation in him, Seth, for sure. And next season with or without Ten Hag, doesn't matter because Mainu will be at the centre of that Man United midfield. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, definitely. 100%. It just feels like we're watching a star being born in real time, doesn't it? I think it's uh, an interesting one. Let's look at this quickly from a Liverpool perspective. We've got a couple of comments here. This one from Michael Lewis. He says, I think Klopp mismanaged his rotations in the last week. 
playing too many key players in the Anfield leg of the Europa competition. We didn't need such a strong lineup against Prague and our fatigue showing at the end of the regulation time in Manchester showed this. I think running Joe as the inverted winger was a massive mistake and led to the first goal. The confusion between Kwanzaa and Joe Gomez after losing possession was quite atrocious. Does Kwanzaa go out wide and Joe Gomez fill in? Joe just chased the ball and let the overlapping run happen, which led to the goal. If we'd had Bradley in from the top with less fatigue, we would have stayed even wider and created more chances. And then here comes the sass. Congrats to United on making the semi-final of the FA Cup by beating a Liverpool side that has been playing twice a week for the last couple of months. Somebody give them their trophy. Oh, on I our... thought he'd managed to get through then without without the bitterness. No, no, you're never going to get that. Never going to get that. <laughs> Arnav said, incredible game despite the result. I found it tough to comment without getting emotionally carried away, but I thought that this was the first big Klopp slip I've seen in more than a year. The decision to sub off Soberstai when he was running the game and to bring on an incredibly ineffective Cody Hakpo at the time he did was a mistake. This I thought was probably just about fair. The Soberstai sub was weird because he was having a, a cracking game in the middle and playing really, really well. And I do think that the balance of this Liverpool side shifted when Soberstai went off. The Joe Gomez and Quanza point that Michael brings up, I think is is fair, but equally if you'd looked at that team beforehand, you probably wouldn't have been thinking that that was going to be a problem in its own right. You know, you, you'd be very comfortable with what was going on there. We've seen Joe Gomez drop incredible performance after incredible performance this season. Quance has been solid every time, pretty much, that he's been called upon. And the, the rotations, you know, I, I can't sit here now at this point after speaking on Friday and saying that it felt like a perfect game for Liverpool ahead of their United Cup tie because they were able to get goals and minutes into key players to be able to ease off the throttle in the second half. I can understand that in hindsight, it might be easy to say that our players, you know, were played who who shouldn't have, or there was too many big names in that side. But equally, I think that a, a level of respect and modicum of the competition needs to be applied as well. And considering how comfortable that was for Liverpool, it felt like at the time Klopp had got that right. I just think that this was a game that, look, could have swung either way. And that's a big jump and a big step for United to come up to to Liverpool's level as opposed to Liverpool throwing it away. There were some weird decisions. I do think the Sobers, I think, is the most important of the lot. But I, I think this was United stepping up as opposed to Liverpool completely dropping off a level. Yeah. I guess if you're a Liverpool fan too, like consider which would you have rather won this season, the Europa League or the FA Cup? Because you're still in the Europa League, you're out of the FA Cup, and I guess a part of it has definitely come down to the fact that he did play a lot of key players in that um, in that match the other day. So, um, I mean, you're going to say Europa League because you're a Europa League ultra. Some Liverpool fans won't feel that way. Some Liverpool fans would have rather have had the FA Cup, especially as it's meant going out at the hands of Man United. That would but... also be so... It's also completely reasonable. I just think I think in terms of that, and you know, trying to take away my own innate Europa League favouritism here, the other thing is that it's the one trophy that Klopp's been in that he hasn't won, right? It's the last yeah, one that's that there's the edge, been an opportunity. Yeah. yeah. So that, that, that's definitely a big, a big factor in it. Whether it is for Klopp himself, who knows? But you would imagine so, right? Like, hard Complete to believe that wouldn't be the case. Yeah, like, sees, you know, Jose Mourinho and managers like that going around gloating for their in the moments of their career about all the trophies they want, won, and you want to be able to reel them off, you know? So, not the end of the world, but you've got to go and win that Europa now. The quadruple's gone, which was expected, you know. I've, I, know I've, I was... I've never played that up. I've always played it down because it's almost impossible. And this is why, because it's the balance of games. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, we, we talked about it with, with City and, and the League Cup and it seems to be the one every year that they're just like, well, yes, it'd be nice at this point. You know, the, the, you know, obviously City had that run where they won every League Cup for four years or whatever it was. But it has felt like as they've stepped up the gas in other competitions, that's the one that's fallen a bit more by the wayside Unfortunately, it is difficult to to go all the way and, and win everything in in every competition. You know, to fight on all fronts across the entirety of a season is incredibly hard. And we've seen Liverpool get to this kind of stage before, right? Where they are still in the hunt for, for loads of different trophies and come up slightly short. And there's no 
shame or you know ridicule attached to that. That's, that's just simply coming up slightly short against very good teams at the sharp end of the biggest competitions in the world. That, that's that's what happens sometimes. Mm. So I think that this is an end of the world. It's not a you know point where you're looking at it and thinking, oh, that's a sh-. you know it is a shame for Liverpool in that there will be no there'll be no stop at Wembley on the Klopp farewell tour. But equally, I think that there is plenty to concentrate on, plenty to address, and it's going to be intriguing to see how how it affects them going forwards in other competitions. It's nice to obviously have a break now and just to be able to kind of stand back, reset, and mm. kind of assess where they are ahead of this run-in that's going to be incredibly... Well, yeah. it's going to be it makes it, intense, isn't it? It makes it more painful when you see the cup draw made and you see that Man United are playing Coventry. And while, look, I'm, I'm not going to disrespect Coventry by saying they've got no chance because they have got a chance. If you're Liverpool and you know that you had a cup semi-final coming up against Coventry City, you're like, ah... Oh. That's annoying. That's annoying. We would have avoided Chelsea and more importantly Man City. Um and we would have been we would have been giving Klopp that that last cup final. Um the likelihood would say. So yeah, a uh, strange one, but as it stands right now, we're probably dare I say it looking at another Manchester derby as the final. And that went well for United last time it happened. So uh, we'll um, we'll smile and, and, and that see. That would save Ten Hag's job if he can pull that one off, man. Well, that, absolutely. We hope that you enjoyed that excerpt from the post box. The rest of the episode, we covered a lot of ground. We talked about Chelsea, the young core and Raheem Sterling's performances. We talked about Coventry stunning Wolves at Molyneux. And, of course, Fulham beating Tottenham, as well as Real Madrid, Barcelona, Juventus, PSG... Borussia Dortmund and Atletico Madrid and what that Champions League tie looks like right now. We did a little bit of a chat about Max Allegri's future in particular and if Juve could be overhauled in that race for Champions League football considering Roma and Bologna are in such good form. We talked a little about about Hibernian as well, the Arsenal women and Sockgate as they went to Chelsea and the latest international kits have dropped from both Nike and Adidas ahead of Euro 2024 and of course the Copa America this summer. The links as ever are in the description. Free trials are available. We'd love for you to come and give us a try over on Patreon and join what is such a brilliant ranks community. But for now, we'll see you on it later in the week thank you so much for listening take it easy peace final seconds of the game a chance to score and the chance has gone begging if your business's commerce platform keeps missing the target on golden opportunities get the mvp you deserve get shopify <coughs> shopify is the commerce platform revolutionizing millions of businesses worldwide Whether you're a garage entrepreneur or IPO ready, Shopify is the only tool that you need to start, run and grow your business without the struggle. Shopify puts you in control of every sales channel. So whether you're selling signed football boots from Shopify's in-person POS system or you're vending vintage shirts on Shopify's all-in-one e-commerce platform, you are covered. And once you've reached your audience, Shopify has the internet's best converting checkout to help you turn them from browsers to buyers. What I love about Shopify is how, no matter how big you want to grow, Shopify gives you everything you need to take control and take your business to the next level. Shopify powers 10% of all e-commerce in the US. And Shopify is truly a global force, powering Allbirds, Rothy's and Brooklinen, and millions of other entrepreneurs of every size across over 170 countries. Plus, Shopify's award-winning help is there to support your success every step of the way. This is Possibility, powered by Shopify. Sign up for a $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash ranks, all lowercase. Go to shopify.com forward slash ranks to take your business to the next level today. That's shopify.com slash ranks.